The Darkness 2 is one of my favorite FPSs of all time. It reminds me of New Doom, but like, four years before New Doom existed, or like a version of Duke Nukem Forever from a parallel universe where it was actually good. It's a loving tribute to the FPSs of the past, brought up to date, and one of the greatest power fantasies in the entire medium. So, The Darkness 2 is an adaptation of the comic, which I've never read, and a sequel to The Darkness 1, a game which I've never played, because, you know, console shooter. But lucky for me, there's a little recap video at the start of the game to fill me in on the backstory. So, in the beginning, there was nothing. But then God said, let there be light. Now, that really pissed off the darkness. The Darkness, who isn't quite the devil, but might as well be, is the physical manifestation of all things evil, and the main character and leader of the Franchetti Mafia, Jackie Estacado, is its current host. The story follows Jackie both encountering and doing battle with an ancient and powerful society called the Brotherhood, who wants to use a holy artifact to steal the darkness for themselves. So, the main thing that separates the darkness from other shooters is its genius, fucking genius, central mechanic, quad wielding. So, like in Wolfenstein, you can dual wield any two weapons in the game, from pistols to rifles to whatever. But in addition to that, you also have these two darkness arms hovering above you at all times, and you can command them to do things like a goth version of Dr. Octopus. So, they can eat the hearts of dead enemies to restore your lost health, grab environmental objects like propane tanks, fans, and poles, and use them to explode slash decapitate slash impale enemies. You can slash at enemies with them. You can grab things like car doors to use as shields, then throw the car doors to slice their heads off, and once an enemy has been weakened, you can pick them up and perform a brutal and bloody execution on them to regain either health or ammo. And it's when you combine doing all of these things at once, shooting with two machine guns while simultaneously throwing shit and eating hearts, that you feel like a god. Every combat in this game is fast-paced insanity, thanks mostly to the fantastic health system. It's very much a Far Cry style affair, where your health is measured in bars that regenerate the rest of the current bar when you go without being shot for a bit. But as mentioned earlier, you can also use the darkness to eat the hearts of dead enemies to instantly regain lost health. And since that's the main way to get health back, you are constantly incentivized to keep moving and keep killing. It's basically Doom's glory kill system, but again, four years early. However, that is not to say that you're completely unstoppable. Because you're powered by the darkness, you're weak to, you guessed it, the light. Even standing under a common street lamp is enough to push back the night, as it were, and leave you standing there bleary-eyed and helpless without the darkness arms you've come to rely on. And not only do you lose basic abilities like your darkness arms, but pretty much every single upgrade in the game is temporarily lost too. For example, some of the upgrades in the game include an extended clip for a certain type of gun, or another that gives you armor literally made of darkness, or another that lets you shoot without wasting ammo. But every single upgrade you can get only applies while in the dark. So while you become stronger and stronger as the game goes on, you simultaneously become weaker and weaker to the light, as it takes away all the upgrades you've come to rely on. And of course, this coincides with not only an increase in environmental lighting, but also in enemies that specifically carry around lights to shine at you. So not only does this necessitate clever thinking and positioning, but it also just feels badass. Like, okay, the best way to explain this is that there's this bit in the trailer for the game where enemies with spotlights run in and shine them on Jackie, causing the darkness to disintegrate. But then he shoots the lights out, and the darkness comes right back. And it's so cool, because yeah, they may have temporarily had the upper hand, but now you're in control again, and you're gonna push their shit back in so hard it comes up through their mouths. 
So even though the mechanic is specifically designed to depower you, it also serves as a constant reminder of just how powerful you are when the lights go out and then the darkness comes back. Speaking of though, I do recommend playing the game either on hard mode or above, because while the game's stated intention is to give you a power fantasy, I feel like that's only strengthened so long as there are actually stakes to the combat. Like, if you can just walk through a hail of bullets no problem, yeah, that makes you feel powerful, but that's the boring type of powerful. It's a hell of a lot more fun to mow your way through an entire crowd of religious zealots when you're constantly on the knife edge of dying yourself and having to make use of all your powers to stay alive. The Darkness 2 is also the only game I think I have ever played where I have actually been motivated to go for 100% completion by picking up all the random collectibles and shit scattered throughout the levels. And considering how legendarily short my attention span is, yeah, I'm bored of that sentence now. Anyways, the reason I went back and replayed levels to get 100% was because they made the collectibles insanely interesting. In The Darkness, the collectibles are all relics, and each one of them has some sort of rich backstory that can be read once you've gotten it, and that ties back into the overarching narrative with The Darkness and Christian mythology. And the best part? Each of these descriptions is narrated by the best character in the game, Johnny Powell. Let me play just one, just one of the 30 relics in the game. Whoa, hold up. Whoa, 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 whatever you do, for the love of God, don't ever let that blade touch your skin. I mean, what do you think you're doing bringing that here? Well, okay, yes, 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 this is your house, so I guess you can do whatever the fuck you want. But remember, I'm here to help you figure if what you want to do is actually something you don't want to do. Trust me when I say, using that knife falls into the latter category. That's a furba, which on its own is dangerous enough to a guy like you. A furba's blade will pin a demon to the spot. Once that's done, only the person who shanked the demon can free it. Now. It is possible that a normal Ferba wouldn't be strong enough to bind you, but this is the Trinity. Its blade was forged from the three nails that crucified Christ. Not normal! Extremely not normal! If you'd cut yourself with the Trinity, you would have been paralyzed. The only person who could have set you free would have been you, which you wouldn't be able to do because you would be paralyzed. Do you see the paradox here? Come to think of it, you ever decide to touch this stuff, just, just, just ask first. All right, nothing big, just a simple, hey, Johnny, is it okay if I touch this? And I'll say, sure, Jackie. That absolutely will not trap you in a never-ending loop of torment. Or I'll say the other thing. You know, no. Honest to God, if I didn't think this would eat up half an hour, I would literally play every single one of them. I just, they're all so fucking cool. However, we have now reached the part of the video where I have to list my various grievances to maintain a facade of objectivity. So for starters, I'll say that The Darkness 2 has the worst splash screen that I have ever seen in the history of gaming. No, not because it doesn't fit tone-wise or is over long or whatever, but because it's about 20 decibels louder than it needs to be. So imagine it. You're staring at your nice quiet desktop with a relaxing picture of best girl, and you say aloud, Hey, I want to go play some of the darkness too. That sounds like a jolly good time. Ah! Jesus fucking Christ. You see, this right here is why I said that all splash screens should be purged in my last video. However, it's not just deafening intros that hold the game back. There's also a bit of tonal inconsistency going on here and there. The parts of the game where we watch Jackie have hallucinations of his dead girlfriend or somberly attend his grandmother's funeral are kind of at odds with the parts of the game where you rip a man's spine out through his mouth or pin someone to a wall by the part of their brain that remembers how to put one foot in front of the other. And credit where it's due, as someone who has never consumed a single other piece of darkness-related media, this game does a fantastic job of making me want to, but Jesus Christ, there's too much story in this game. I mean, I understand that you need peaks and troughs of action to maintain our attention, even in a game as short as this one, but they really went overboard here. It feels like every time the game manages to build up a decent pace, everything suddenly has to stop. So we can go back to our penthouse and talk to some guys before we're allowed to continue our murder spree. But at the same time, 
Despite how the story drags the combat down, I did find myself getting weirdly invested in it, especially the ending. You see, all throughout the game, you're constantly being shown visions of Jackie's dead girlfriend, Jenny, and you're led to believe that it's the darkness messing with your head, but that doesn't seem quite right either, because the darkness talks like something else is doing it. It deceives you. Leave me alone! You are alone, Jackie. Then, at the end, it is grandly revealed that the Angelus, a being of pure light made by God with the sole intention of destroying the darkness, has not only been causing all of those illusions, hence why all of them are preceded by flashes of light, but has now also possessed Jenny's soul and made her its new host. And having trapped both Jackie and the darkness in hell, it steals her away, setting up the plot for the third game, that never happened. Now, usually I'm very much against cockblock teaser endings for exactly this reason, but holy fucking shit, how cool would this story have been if the Darkness 3 was a thing? I mean, two star-crossed lovers, held apart by fate like Romeo and Juliet, except in this case, Juliet is possessed by an angel and Romeo is possessed by a demon. You have these two gods, preordained by fate itself to forever do battle with each other, and the two star-crossed lovers are pulled into conflict and forced by those gods to kill each other. It's fucking genius! So too bad it'll never fucking happen. <sighs> Still though, as sad as I am that this story will probably never have a definite ending, there is still a lot to love about the darkness too. So much, in fact, that I haven't even had time to mention it all yet. Like, how I love the cel-shaded art style that makes everything look like it came fresh out of the comic book source material. Or how fantastic the voice of the darkness is. Or how aside from the main campaign, there's also the Vendettas mode, an entirely separate multiplayer campaign where you can play as one of four assassins, all with their own unique weapons and playstyles. So, The Darkness 2 is fucking fantastic, and you can pick it up on Steam for... wait, 30 bucks? Seriously? Okay, that might be a bit steep for like 10 hours max of game, so just add it to your Steam wishlist. It routinely goes on sale for like 4 or 5 bucks, and for that price, it is an absolute must buy. Hey guys, did you know that I have a second channel called Psy Live where I upload all sorts of other shit like vlogs and let's plays? It's true. Link to that in the doobly doo. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. The Darkness 2 has long since been a favorite of mine, so I loved getting the chance to talk about it. And for giving me that chance, I would like to especially thank my wonderful Patreon patrons, Isaiah Christo, Saws Bucky, Forgotten Paladin, Ludwig, Magiline, Mythnut, and Soul. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later. Uh,